As promised, guys, I have the numbers for the total cost of the material. The deal was too good to pass up. Yes, and when you're trying to live debt-free and build your home debt-free, you gotta keep an eye out for stuff like this. All right, guys, welcome back. We only have four inches left to bring this house pad up. Like I said before, it's gonna be a different material than the dirty screen, and here it is right here. One thing I gotta do when I go and get materials, I gotta block the opening where the winch comes out. As some of you know, we have a log arch. That's what that winch is used for. You gotta keep the, the dirt out of it. So what this stuff is called is class six basalt AB. It is not 100% gravel, but it's it's got a lot of gravel in it. It's got a lot of sand in it and very little uh, dirt. And the reason I went with this, we got an airplane flying. Holy cow, he's flying. <laughs> okay. As I was saying, the reason we didn't go with just all gravel for the last four inches is this uh, locks together and holds together a lot better than just plain old gravel. Um, so we can compact this and when we go to do all of our trenching and uh, trenching for the utilities and four footers, this won't have the tendency, I, I hope anyway, to fall into the trench and just make a big mess. So that's what this is. It's only $13.50 a ton and we don't need a whole lot of it. So it should go down pretty quick. All right, guys, so the house pad is done. We didn't show very much footage of the last four inches because we kind of thought maybe you guys are getting tired of that. <laughs> Let's be honest, we were getting a little tired. We were. It, this is uh, very time consuming, building the pad itself. Forget about hauling the material. Obviously, we could if, if you have that delivered or if you haul it yourself, this part takes as much time as it's gonna take, right? 
we had to build it up pretty much. Let's see, I said we were 15 and a half. So we're like 20 inches up on the downhill side. So it's pretty tall. And what we're doing now is you'll see we got some piles of clay over there, our clay dirt that I'm grabbing out of a giant hole I'm digging at the other end of the property and bringing it over here because it's less rocky over there. <laughs> The reason we want to do this is for the sake of making sure our footers, when we dig our footers, because our, our footers are going to go, you know, the edge of it is like right here, and then it this was going downhill right there. And so our, my fear is that this sidewall, outside sidewall of the footer would be too weak and could cave in or out or break up. So we're just reinforcing the outer edge of the house pad with clay and we're not even uh, getting the laser level out for that or anything. We're just kind of eyeballing it to get it about the same height as this. Um, of course, watering it down really good. So we've gone a pretty fair distance on this edge. We're gonna come around the corner a little bit here and probably stop somewhere around here because if you guys remember our house plans that we showed you, we got a big wraparound porch, which means we're gonna need the good stuff, this stuff here that we hauled in wrapped around here. And the way we're gonna do that is the, we're gonna take the material that we dig out for the footers and that's where that material is gonna go because it's mostly gonna be this stuff that we brought in, this AB and dirty screen material. We still have more dirt work to do. Um, but this, we're getting closer. We are. This clay, the clay part's going real quick. And then the footers, when we start digging the footers, there's going to be more moving material around to get it where we want it, around uh, this edge of the house up here. So, to refresh your guys' memory, the front door is, let's see, there's the root cellar. The front door. It's about right here, and the porch ends a little bit past it, probably where the backhoe tire is here. And it goes, a covered porch, 10 feet out, goes out to here, and then all the way down this side of the house. And if you remember, this is our favorite part of the house. It's the window wall that is facing south and we'll be able to see the mountains over there. It's gonna be a really good view. There'll be a, a French door here as well, right in the middle where you can come out. And yeah, so this, this strip, that strip, we're gonna take the material from the footers and put it here. And, but I might even, I might still bring some clay in to bring this up a little bit and then put this stuff on top of that clay. So yeah, a lot of dirt work. Yeah. But we're getting somewhere. I know. It's exciting. I mean, look at the root cellar. We're all the way to the top. Yep. That's eight foot down over there into the root <laughs> cellar. Finally. <laughs> it's, it's completely buried. All right. So let's finish up this clay yep. work. And uh, then we can start marking out footers finally. Yes. Something a little different. <laughs> Something a little more exciting too. I know. I'm excited. Well, the house pass what was exciting. For the first couple days but then, yeah <laughs> then we were like, i know can we do something else <laughs> every time we start a new phase of the project it's like this is so exciting and then we get and like okay what's next when's the next we're part like, yeah 10 percent done <laughs> tell me what's next <laughs> we're right. making progress and it's exciting yeah
We found a good deal online for some building materials, so we are going on a little trip to go pick up some insulation. We're not that close to needing insulation yet, but the deal was too good to pass up. Yes, and when you're trying to live debt free and build your home debt free, you gotta keep an eye out for stuff like this. Natalie is good at doing that, by the way. <laughs> Natalie scored this. <laughs> yep. I try to just keep my eye out for different material. Well, I'm always looking, we're always building stuff. So looking for things that we need now and then you see things that you need later. So this is brand new insulation. It's never been used. It's still in rolls. The guy just had extra leftover from a job. So brand new stuff and it'll save us tons over buying it from the store. All right guys, so here is the huge score we got from Facebook Marketplace. We got a trailer chuck full of insulation. Most of this is R30. There's one roll that's R11. And the guy that we got it from, he said he had gotten it from a couple of Dollar Generals that were constructed and this was all left over from them. So I asked him about how much do you think all this is brand new? He didn't really know, but he did know that this one particular roll this is like four feet tall. He said, this is $500 at Home Depot, this roll alone. And so if you look, I mean, th this is, has to be ballpark of $4,000 worth of insulation. And we got it for $500 for the whole thing. That's a, that's a blessing. Only downside to the thing is we don't really have much room for this. <laughs> Um, but we're gonna make room. We got a little bit of room in the metal shed right here And we're gonna make some room in our loft over in the powerhouse shed get this stuff all put away for when we're ready for it and uh, Get back to working on the house pad So guys, back when we built the shed and the loft, I left this opening thinking it would be a good access point to the back end of the loft. The truth is, we've never used it. <laughs> and actually, it's been kind of a pain because when you're up there, you got to make sure you don't accidentally step right there. You can't put stuff too close to it. Anyway, we're closing it up. Uh, mostly because of this insulation and I've kind of wanted to close it up, so...
put that up there for a while. I know. We can't believe we didn't do it until, I mean, once we finished the second, we should just put it up. We've got the shed all organized. It's ready for the insulation to go in there. We took a couple things out, including Jacob's elk. We got it mounted out here on the shed. Looks pretty good. Kind of completes the whole thing. And it's out of the way of the lock. Is it all gonna fit? I don't know. I was thinking. Hey, of... it's the relic. Remember the relic? Here it is. <laughs> My oh. snakeskin stick. You're gonna keep that over there? Yeah, I didn't know where else to put it. Oh, on display. <laughs> Walking stick. <laughs> all right. I thought it was spacious back here, but man, these take up a lot of space. I know. Maybe it's not so spacious as I thought. We'll see. Yep. Can evaluate. There you have it. We made it with room to spare. Oh, sort of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I can't find any more awesome deals online for a bit, though. What do oh. you mean? There's some pockets. We could fit something up there. <laughs> yeah, we could. <sighs> It'll have to be outside stuff. Yep. <laughs> okay. <sighs> the already full shed is now full. <sighs> All right, so basically, I'm going to come in from here and get a scoop and come up and over. Okay. Um, I'm fine with just piling it up in one spot and getting it all wet, and then I can just kind of backtrack it maybe. I don't know, I probably shouldn't have put that here yet, but... As promised guys I have the numbers for the total cost of the material to build up our house pad also this includes the material to um, fill in around our root cellar here so first number to share with you is how much material there is we got 214 tons that we brought in ourselves and uh, that sounds like a lot a little crazy for our little old trailer but we did and to have that delivered, it would have cost us $5,040 to have the pit bring us the material instead of us getting it. But since we got it ourselves, it only cost us $2,900. Quite a big difference there. So that difference is $2,140. But of course, there's other costs such as fuel. That's pretty much the only other cost. Fuel for the truck. We, uh, we did the math how many miles back and forth, and the average cost per gallon, we came out with $426 for gas. Sorry about the wind, by the way, it's a little breezy today. So, final number, 
of, for savings is $1,714. Pretty good chunk of change there, I think. 1700 bucks. Now the big question is, would we do this again? So we have plans in the distant future, at least I do anyway, to have a nice big shop. So what that means is we'll need another pad like this. And the question there is, do we haul it again ourselves? And my answer is yes, <laughs> but a little differently. I, uh, I don't wanna use that trailer again to haul any material unless it's only for like a handful of loads, then it's okay. Um, I, uh, I will not have it delivered. That's, it's just too much to have it delivered. That, that's 1700 bucks. <laughs> um, definitely out of the question. So dump trailer, too expensive also to buy a dump trailer. You're looking at 7,000 to $10,000, somewhere in there for a used or a new one. Renting a dump trailer, I'm not really interested. <laughs> I, I just don't like renting things, call me stubborn, you know. And, uh, but the idea that I was inspired with uh, while doing all this is to build my own dump trailer. So I think that is a definite thing that I wanna do. Obviously not right now, it's, we got other things we gotta get to, right? We'd like to live in a house sometime this century. <laughs> but a dump trailer, so I'd need, for, for, in order for that to happen, I need the right things to just fall in my lap. And I know those things are out there and I'm keeping my eye out. So as time goes on, I'll be collecting those items to someday build my own dump trailer and probably only will cost me $1,700 if I could get it just right. It's somewhere around there. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the explanation and the clarity. My apologies to those of you who are sick and tired of us hauling the dirt or the, the material the way we were. <laughs> but it is what it is and we're pretty much through that phase. So we're ready for footers in the next video. So we'll see you guys in a week.